really quick before we dive in, I want to talk about what HTML is just really briefly. Uh, it is not really a programming language. It is a markup language. Um, although you might see it somehow morph into some sort of programming language here soon as they develop it more and more. But at its core, it's, it's a very simple language. Uh, and if you can grasp just a, a few of the fundamentals, you can start making websites, web pages really quickly. And then once you get a handle on CSS, you can start making those pages look attractive. So to just show you how an HTML page is laid out, I'm going to go ahead and create a new document here in Dreamweaver. I'm going to use the shortcut control N, which is a pretty common shortcut in most programs. That'll create a new file. Uh, if you're using Dreamweaver, we're just going to choose HTML. And uh, really quick, if you'll note, if you're using the most recent version of uh, Dreamweaver, your document type is most likely going to be HTML5. But if it isn't, go ahead and select HTML5, and it should stay that way from now on until you choose otherwise. Uh, there is there is a difference, a very slight difference. So here we go. Here are the kind of base tags associated with an HTML document. We have the doc type, the HTML tag, the header tag, uh, meta tags, title tag, and body tag. And the majority of these have opening and closing tags. So let's just clear this out for a second. Let's just talk about what a tag really is. It consists of a few components here. And we're going to start off with uh, what we call a paragraph tag, or you could call it a P tag it is simply just a P. So we, there, we have an opening and a closing. This would be the opening tag and this is the closing tag. There are a handful of tags that do not have the closing tag, um, but for the most part you are going to have a closing tag. And these opening and closing tags kind of act as a wrapper. They're going to wrap around something such as a letter or a sentence. Which then is going to apply just some very, very simple formatting. It's going to add some padding to the top and the bottom, or some buffer to the top and the bottom of this sentence, thus giving the illusion that it's a paragraph. And in order to visualize that, let's go ahead and I'm going to save this document. And you can name it pretty much whatever you want. Uh, things are case sensitive. And uh, you just want to make sure it has the HTML or .html extension. So if you're using Dreamweaver, you'll see the files you're saving here in your files panel. If not, you can simply open up Windows Explorer if you're on a Mac. Um, you know, navigate to the file uh, and just double click on it and it should open in your default browser. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this file. Now, I will note, we're not using any of the you know, base HTML tags that go on a page. And we're going to add those later, the ones I, I deleted a moment ago. Uh, you can get away with doing a lot of HTML without those. However, you really don't want to build pages and websites that way. But for example purposes now, I'm going to show you just you know a couple things here. So let's go ahead and take a look at example001.html. Okay, now I've got that open in the browser. Um, I will note I am using a home server, uh, which that domain name points to. It's a local in-house server uh, or in my network. Uh, so yours is probably going to say something like c colon slash slash, you know, documents, website slash something dot HTML because you're, you're pulling it off of your home computer. But uh, here's our page and here's our paragraph. Uh, nothing fancy about it just yet. So let's go ahead and let's add another paragraph tag here and we'll, you know, there you go. So we'll add another sentence or paragraph since it's wrapped in a paragraph tag. Save this. Let's flip back over to our browser, refresh the page, and you can use the F5 key 
to do so. And there you go. Now you're seeing that, that buffer or that padding uh, between the two, thus giving it kind of the illusion um, of a paragraph. Now it's important to note that the, uh, the tags are really used to give some base formatting to text or elements on a page. If we took out these two tags here and just had one one paragraph, one set of paragraph tags here, and I hit the enter key here. In our code, that's going to drop down one line. Now if I save this, and we take a look at it in our browser again, F5, there's no drop down there. That is because this is still within the paragraph tag, and it's treating that as a paragraph. I can put as much what we call white space, or lines, in between this, and it's still going to show up as such. So that can be frustrating to people who first get into HTML. Um, they, you know, they're hitting enter. Or they're, uh, another thing is you're really only allowed one space character. If I hit the space key several times and we save that, you see we still have one space. Now we'll introduce another tag, and this is one of those tags that does not have a closing tag, and that is the line break tag or the BR tag. Now this will actually shift the next line down, or these next sentence here down. But what's going to be important to note is the difference between when we had the two paragraph tags, which gave the buffer between the two lines, and what we're going to see here. So that brings it down to the next line without any extra padding, because the padding is coming from here and here. So before and after, kind of think of it that way. And just to illustrate that again, I'm going to go ahead and create this paragraph here. And I'll just show you a nifty shortcut here in Dreamweaver, Control Shift P, if you have a um, some text highlighted that will wrap a paragraph tag around it. Again, that's, that's only really a Dreamweaver thing. Um, another thing you can do in most text editors is you can highlight text and uh, you can click and drag it or you can hold down control and make a copy of it. And again, I'm going to do control shift P, which is a Dreamweaver shortcut. And now we'll see the difference. Now, you may think this is trivial, and, and maybe to some who already know a little bit, uh, it is very trivial, but it can get really frustrating when you're working with white space when you're first learning, like I said. And this can drive you nuts because you you know you know you hit the space key or the tab key several times and yet the line's not being bumped out or it's not going down. Um, so that's why. Now this is a little ahead of where we're at the, at this moment, but we, we really need to introduce this tag because um, it's gonna help with these example files. And this is uh, the commenting tag. What this allows us to do is to put uh, comments or notes in the code that could be read by you know yourself later on at a later time when you want to open up this document and see where things are, or leave a note for yourself, or if you're working on a, a collaborative effort and you want to leave notes for other people so they can easily navigate your code, because sometimes these pages can get you know, thousands of lines of code, especially when you get into CSS, JavaScript, things like that. So they're really helpful, and they're going to be helpful for these example files. So to make a comment in HTML, you start with this here, the uh, less than sign, then an exclamation point, dash, dash, whatever you want to be your comment, dash, dash, greater than sign. Um, and these can span over multiple lines if you want. You can kind of uh, format these. There's some somewhat of an art to making comments. Some people get really creative, uh, you know, get crazy with uh, doing things like this, uh, things like that. So, but for this for this example, we're gonna just make it make it simple here. So, I'm gonna introduce that because I want to put comments in here, and I don't want you to be confused on what I'm doing here. Now to show you what happens in the browser, if I save this, refresh, we don't see the comments in the browser. So that's that's good to know. You know. We can put these in here, we can put as much in as we want, and people don't see them when they go to your website. Now, 
However, it is important to note that with HTML comments and JavaScript comments and CSS comments, you can see them if you view the page source, which pretty much anybody with a browser can do. So, you know, be aware of what you're putting in there. Don't put anything important in there like passwords to something, you know, just so you can remember how to get on the web server or something, you know, ridiculous things like that. Uh, just be careful about that. Now, if you're following along, uh, make sure you save often. Uh, nothing hurts more than losing a bunch of code because you didn't save. So whenever I say I'm, I'm saving, I'm doing control S and that's uh, the shortcut for most things on a Windows machine. If you're using a Mac, it's probably going to be command S. Um, or, you know, you could simply go up to the file menu and choose save or save as. And what we're going to do is actually do save as now. I've already saved this and we're going to go ahead and use this as our example uh, to look at some other tags. And a shortcut for that in most cases is control shift S. So I'm just going to rename this to example two. 